love towards self, meaning you, and the entirety of you. So not just the higher consciousness you, but inclusive of the theme that you chose in this life, the body that you chose in this life, whatever your body might be experiencing at any given moment, your mind, your personality, your situations, etc. So total love for self, unconditional love for self. Can you be more unconditional in loving self? You, all of you, the complete package, you. Second bullet point under love is love toward other self. Can you live more unconditionally in love towards other self? It's still self, but it's other self. So it's the rest of yourself, as I say sometimes. Others are simply the rest of yourself. Can you live more unconditionally loving towards other self? This is the third point. Love toward the one infinite creator. So this gets in the domain of the frequency domain of what I would call devotion or faith or being able to recognize the one divine, call it God, call it source, call it creator, call it existence itself, call it you. Whatever is the word that represents the highest, ultimate, absolute, all-consuming authority, the only one that is. Can you love more unconditionally, more deliberately and more unconditionally the one infinite creator in every experience that you meet, in every person that you meet? Can you love by seeing and loving the one infinite creator more unconditionally than you do at this time? So again, what does that mean unconditionally? It means without conditions. It means that you choose to love because you want to, for no other reason. You want to, it feels good, you know it's true, and you just choose to. That's it. There's no expectation in return. There's no conditions on it. The second category is trust. And the first bullet point is, can you be more unconditionally trusting in being safe? So trust in being safe. Second bullet point, can you trust your spiritual journey slash process? Can you trust the process as it unfolds? Can you trust your journey as it unfolds? Even if it takes more time than you would like, even if it goes through similar patterns, can you at least trust the process? I'm not saying to not bump it up a notch, to not make any changes, to not lovingly kick yourself in the butt and raise your standards. I'm not saying to become passive, but I am saying to trust in the journey, to trust in the process so that you feel good and loving towards it. Third bullet point, trust in being supported by the universe. And you can put in between parentheses, abundance. Can you be more trusting in the fact that you are supported, that there is infinite abundance, and that you and your life and the way you wish to create your life is supported by the universe? Can you become more unconditionally faithful towards that, trusting in that, having faith in that? Third category is fearless. First bullet point, can you be more unconditionally fearless in wanting what you want? or desiring what you desire. Basically, this means that you are not afraid of your desires anymore. It's very important. Desires is what guide your journey, largely. So you have to trust in or be fearless in wanting what you want. Doesn't mean you have to become a maniac about it and you have to manipulate your circumstances to get it. It simply and only means that you become more fearless in acknowledging and accepting and feeling that what you want is what you want you don't tolerate self-skepticism or self-doubt. If you desire something, at least own it again. Don't go chasing it like a maniac that believes in lack and therefore it needs to get it. But accept that you want what you want and fall in love with that. Okay, so can you become more fearless in what you desire, who you desire to be? Be fearless in that. Trust it. Second bullet point under fearless is fearless in expressing yourself. Can you be more unconditionally fearless in expressing yourself? Whether that is telling the truth of your experience to your partner or someone you're talking to. Can you be truthful in your communication? Fearless in that. But it also means, can you be fearless in showing up to life in whatever way you desire and is part of your passion? Can you be fearless in expressing yourself in general towards nature, towards people, towards the society? Can you be fearless in following your joy and expressing yourself? And the third bullet point is fearless in serving others or other selves or the rest of yourself. Can you be more fearless in being of service? Because oftentimes we like the idea of being of service to others. We've been conditioned to believe that's the good thing to do and it's rightful and it's beautiful and it's ridding you of sin and all those stories. But really, 
When it comes down to it, a lot of people protect their own bubbles. They protect their own lives. They put their own thing first, which in some ways is the right thing to do because if you're empty, you can't give anything, of course. But in lots of ways, you actually keep yourself empty and lacking by not being of service, by not stepping fearlessly into generosity, into giving, into creating, into being fearless in serving others. So can you be less protective of your personal bubble, your family's bubble, your little life? And can you expand the little life to become a somewhat bigger life and include more people, more beings? Be more fearless in being of service to others. So tonight before you go to bed, I want you to go through this list. And I want you to do this in a relaxed meditative state where you're tuned into yourself. You're relaxed. You're at ease as much as you can, as much as you are. What I want you to do is to go through these bullet points and just consider these questions. When you consider a question with an open, relaxed mind, it does almost all the work for you. Sometimes it does all the work for you. To be in a state of considering something is to be in a state of openness, is to be in a state of unbiased, non-insistent presence. So ask yourself the question to each bullet point, can I or how can I love more unconditionally towards myself? Or how can I be more unconditionally loving towards myself? And just consider that. Leave it open. Don't think. Don't go heavy into thinking. This is not a verbal, mental, verbal thing. This is an intuitive, energetic, tactile experience. This is very, almost bodily in a way. It's a very embodied presence type of experience. Okay, so you relax your mind. Do whatever you want to do to take a deep breath and relax for two to five seconds. Maybe do that like five times or so until you feel that the momentum of thinking has subsided a little bit and there's more space in your consciousness. Then you drop yourself these questions. How could I love more unconditionally myself? How could I be more unconditionally loving towards myself? How could I be more unconditionally loving towards other self? How can I be or can I be more unconditionally loving towards the one infinite creator? And again, you raise the question in this open mind space and you just let it rest there. You let it mold your attention. You let it mold your mind. You let it download realizations. That's basically how I penetrate certain layers of confusion within myself or belief systems. I am open. I'm not thinking. I'm not biased. I'm asking a genuine question to which I wish and desire strongly to know the answer. And so I let the question sit there and I ponder it. I consider it. And just in that open space of consideration, my consciousness will, will naturally sort of wrap around that question, form like a rocket and penetrate a new layer of realization. Does that make sense? Play with this in your own way. Visualize something if you want to, but don't go over verbalize things, okay? Don't describe things too much. It's not descriptions. You want to end up with feelings, with a state of greater love right there and then. So it's not about writing out a life plan like, oh, okay, this is how I can be more unconditionally loving to myself. Here is the strategy. Ten steps to loving myself. No, it's about experiencing it instantaneously, about experiencing it while you're pondering it. That's the idea. So you're opening yourself up to greater love because you all know you can love yourself more. So simply to ask yourself, how can I right now love myself more brings awareness to the system being kind of contracted as its natural basis. And it goes, ah, I didn't even realize I wasn't. But now that I've asked myself the question, I realize that I wasn't as loving to myself as I can be. And so it drops in. And the same applies to all these questions.